Well, we've just heard a little bit from the President Francois Hollande talking about how there's going to be six billion euros of European Union money set aside to help with uh, dealing with some of these issues. Uh, but I also spoke, Francine, with Mario Monti, the former Italian Prime Minister, and I, I started by asking him to diagnose the problem of, of why we have uh, high youth unemployment rates, and he came up with two main reasons. Certainly the qualification of, uh, of the youth uh, for them to become uh, highly employable young uh, uh, men and women is a key component and this is true throughout Europe. But there are countries where markets in general and the labour market more particularly tend to be closed, rather sclerotic. Uh, uh, giving uh, uh, maybe uh, excessive protection to the insiders and leaving the outsiders out in the cold. So it's that rather sclerotic labour market that he was describing there which pretty much fits the bill in Italy. So I asked him to give me his assessment at his own efforts to reform the Italian labour market during the time when he was Prime Minister make a reform, a structural reform, which you need to do at a time when aggregate demand is limited, when the country is undergoing a tough budgetary containment program, then of course you are not in the ideal conditions. Having said that, even the labour market reform, which was one of the several structural reforms undertaken during my government, uh, was a beginning of a reform. So uh, the way he sees it, he's actually started a longer process of reform, but I asked him about whether he thought that the present government was going to be able to follow through, and he wasn't quite so optimistic about the chances of that government being able to do it, given the other uh, reforms that they've got on their agenda, such as electoral reform, Francine. Yeah, David, we also were just hearing from uh, the French president, uh, François Hollande. What has he been talking about, and what's his message for youth unemployment? Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I, 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 when he was speaking, he made a couple of, I thought, rather interesting comments. One is that the responsibility for growth lies with, with national governments and that you can't really look to the European Union to be actually putting into place uh, bigger growth policies. So that's really addressing the idea that you need to have structural reforms. Um, he says that Europe shouldn't be satisfied with the current calm, which is actually quite good news when you think about it, uh, because a lot of other uh, politicians are becoming uh, complacent, particularly as we've seen bond yields falling. He also said something quite interesting about how the Eurozone needs to have an economic government, um, which means that it should also have government uh, budgetary powers. Now, I thought that was interesting because that might be an indication that Monsieur Hollande is beginning to come around to the idea of ceding some sovereignty. That's certainly a question I'm going to put to Karine Belger, a socialist member of parliament who I'll be speaking to in just a few minutes, Francine.